Hello again. We arrived to the classification of chemical synapses. In the previous uh, video, we have uh, explained that chemical synapses are the synapses where uh, the cells uh, do not touch. So uh, the chemical synapses can be classified according to their structure or according to their function. According to their structure, we have neuroneuronal synapse. It's the synapse between two neurons, a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron, as you can see here in this photo. We have always a presynaptic neuron that emits the message and a postsynaptic neuron that receives the message. So the terminal buds here of the presynaptic neuron synapse with the dendrites or the cell body of the postsynaptic neuron. Also, we have neuromuscular synapse, a synapse between a neuron and a muscle cell. As you can see here, the synaptic knobs of the neuron connects with the muscular cell. And we have neuroglandular synapse, the synapse between a neuron and a gland cell. According to their function, the synapses can be excitatory. They allow the transmission of the message between the cells or inhibitory. They block or inhibit the transmission of the message from one cell to another. For the structural classification of chemical synapses, we have the neuroneuronal synapse, the red zone here between a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron. The message passes from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron. It is always unidirectional. We have the neuromuscular synapse, the synaptic knobs of the presynaptic neuron transmit the message to the muscular cells and the message is never transmitted from the muscle to the neuron. Don't forget that, the, the message is unidirectional. Now concerning the neuroglandular synapse, it is the junction between a neuron, always a neuron, and a uh, glandular cell. Here we have represented the salivary gland, and the message is never transmitted from the gland to the neuron. The neuromuscular synapse and the neuroglandular synapse are called neuroeffector synapses because they are synapses between a neuron and an effector organ. Concerning their functions, the excitatory synapse is the synapse in which the presynaptic message or action potential triggers an action potential in the postsynaptic cell. So this synapse allows the transmission of the nervous message. Whereas inhibitory synapse is the synapse in which the presynaptic action potential makes the postsynaptic membrane less likely to generate an action potential. So this synapse inhibits the transmission of the message. The uh, functioning of excitatory synapse and inhibitory synapse will be explained in the next videos. Now concerning the structural aspects of a chemical synapse, the chemical synapse is also called electrochemical synapse because it associates an electrical phenomenon, which is the arrival of an action potential, with a chemical phenomenon, which is the release of chemical molecules to permit or to allow the transmission of the message from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic cell. So the synapse always consists of three elements. The presynaptic element, which is always, always, always the synaptic bud of the neuron. The presynaptic element is always a neuron that emits the message. In this neuron, we have synthesis and storage of chemical molecules or neurotransmitters. We have also the postsynaptic element that receives the message emitted from the presynaptic element. The postsynaptic element can be a neuron, a muscle, or a gland. And uh, on the membrane of the postsynaptic element, we find specific receptors on which uh, the neurotransmitters bind 
after being released in the synaptic cleft. The synaptic cleft is the third element in the synapse, is a small space, 10 to 40 nanometer, that separates the presynaptic element and the postsynaptic element. And in the cleft, the neurotransmitters are released. So we have three main elements, a presynaptic neuron emitting the message. So the message here is uh, electrical, of electrical nature. And then the uh, presynaptic neuron releases a neurotransmitters or neuromediator in the synaptic cleft. So here the message becomes chemical. Then uh, the neurotransmitters bind to the postsynaptic membrane and uh, perturbate the membrane potential of the postsynaptic cell. So the message returns electrical. That's why the synapse is called electrochemical. The message starts, starts electrical. It is transformed into a chemical message, then into an electrical message again. Here we have two uh, photos of uh, neuro, neuronal synapse and neuromuscular synapse under electron microscope. As you can see here, the synaptic vesicles in the presynaptic neuron, they contain neurotransmitters. They are released in the synaptic cleft here. <coughs> they bind to the postsynaptic membrane and they allow or inhibit the transmission of the message. And here we have the postsynaptic muscle membrane and the presynaptic nerve cell containing or filled with the neurotransmitters vesicle. And we have the synaptic cleft here. Here, a schematic diagram showing the structure of a synapse. We have the terminal bud of the presynaptic neuron. It contains vesicles containing neurotransmitters in green. We have the synaptic cleft. And we have the receptors here coupled to ionic channels in purple on which the neurotransmitters will bind. As you can see here in uh, light purple, we have voltage dependent ionic channels, mainly Ca2 plus ion ions channels in the presynaptic membrane. Uh, why do we call these channels voltage dependent since they open under the action of an action potential. So when an action potential arrives to the terminal bud of the presynaptic neuron, it allows the opening of Ca2 plus channels and the entry of Ca2 plus inside the neuron. And uh, we, 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 go, we are going to see uh, the role of Ca2 plus in the uh, transmission of the nervous message. So you have to study this definition. In the official exam, we ask to define voltage-dependent ionic channels and also to define chemodependent uh, ionic channels. Chemodependent ionic channels are found on the postsynaptic membrane, and they are coupled to the neurotransmitters receptor, and they open by the action of neurotransmitters, which are chemical molecules. So when the neurotransmitter binds to its receptor, this binding allows the opening of these ionic channels and the movement of ions across the membrane. That's why we call these channels chemodependent. They do not open if uh, the neurotransmitter is not bound to its receptor. So you have to study the voltage-dependent ionic channels and the chemodependent channels. And in the next video, we are going to explain in details the steps of synaptic transmission in both excitatory and inhibitory synapses. Thanks for listening.